Let's talk Lagrange error bound. I looked up pronunciation for Lagrange and it is either Lagrange or Lagrange. I don't know how he pronounced it. This is also known as Taylor's inequality. And in this lesson, I will be filling in some blanks for a sheet that I gave my own students. So if you are a random passerby on the internet and you want to print this sheet to follow along, you can go to this bit.ly link right here. So let's get into Lagrange. Um, so uh, first we're going to define a few terms. F of X is just a function. It can be represented by some Taylor series centered at X equals C. So C is our center of the uh, interval of convergence. And the interval of convergence is I. A is any X coordinate that is within the interval of convergence. So F of A, no surprise to what F of A is. That is simply the function's actual value. So if you could plug in the value into the function, we would, but sometimes that's very difficult to do, which is where Taylor polynomial approximations come in handy. So sometimes we use the nth degree Taylor polynomial to approximate values for f of a, and that will be denoted with p sub n of a. r sub n of a is the remainder when you use t sub n. And so uh, it, t sub n is an approximation, so there will be some error, and that error is the remainder, which is exactly what I'm going to put down here. So uh, Oh, never mind, that's not what I'm putting. The error is going to be the next one. So uh, R sub n of A, it is the sum of everything that you did not include when you used your nth degree Taylor polynomial. And then, here we go. Uh, your function's value would therefore be your Taylor approximation plus the remainder. And our challenge is to estimate the remainder, because if you can estimate the remainder, then you have an estimate on what the error is. So to estimate the remainder, if I want to know what R sub n of A could be, we would subtract the Taylor polynomial approximation from the function value. And that's what we have here. And that is a way to designate the error. So you will see error reference in a couple of ways. Sometimes in problems, they will actually say like f of two minus Taylor polynomial at two. And that's just an indication that you are looking for the error. So let's get into the actual formula for Lagrange's error bound. And so the first part of this is exactly what was on the previous page, but this formula right here here, m over, where's my highlight? m over n plus 1 factorial times a minus c to the n plus 1 power will give you an upper bound, the maximum possible error that you get from using the Taylor uh, polynomial. m is the maximum value of the next derivative of your function. So if I use a third degree Taylor polynomial to approximate my function value, then to use this formula, I need to know the fourth derivative of my function and its maximum value on the interval center of convergence to the point you plug in. Now, sometimes A is going to actually be on the left side of the interval of convergence. So I guess I could say or A to C if I want to satisfy the gods, depending on what order they are. But you want to make sure you're uh, looking at the maximum of the next derivative from the point you are estimating to the center of convergence. Uh, a fairly common error in this is people confuse n with the number of terms rather than the degree of the Taylor polynomial. So please remember that n is not how many terms you use, it is the degree. So look at the highest power of the Taylor polynomial you are using. Uh, and let's put this to use. Let's put this to use. So it's very hard to learn math by looking at just formal definitions. So let's use Lagrange here. We're going to find the maximum error um, of this approximation. So I'm using my, I almost said third degree. So it's my fourth degree. I, I use three terms, but that is my fourth degree Maclaurin series for cosine x. And I'm using that to approximate the cosine of 0.3. So let's unpack this one and see what Lagrange would tell us for the maximum error. So what we need to do, I have the formula up here. We need to find values of m, n, a and C. And the A and C would be the easier ones. This is the Maclaurin series for cosine X. So C would be zero. We are centered at zero. I am plugging 0.3 into that. So A is 0 0.3. I need um, my N. That's the degree of the Taylor polynomial we use. And we use the fourth degree. So N is four. Then I need to find M. And M is usually the more difficult piece to find because it's not as explicitly in the Taylor polynomial or in the approximation that I have here. And M is the maximum of the N plus first derivative. So M would be less than or equal to 
my fifth derivative of x. And so I'm thinking about the fifth derivative of cosine x. My function is cosine x. And I know that if I do any derivative of cosine, I'm going to cycle through sine and cosine. Some will be negative, some will be positive. But it's all going to be either positive or negative, sine and cosine. And I know that both of those functions have a maximum value of 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm making note that m is 1 here because that is the maximum value of cosine. And for this example, I don't really have to worry about the interval of convergence and being on the interval from a to c. So m is 1, and we'll simply take all of that and we will plug it into our formula up here. So what I know is that the absolute value of my error will be less than or equal to m, which is 1, over n plus 1. So that'll be 5 factorial. Maybe I'll write 4 plus 1 in here. 4 plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of c, my center of, uh, of the uh, my center of the series. And a.3 is what I plugged in. We will raise that to the n plus first power. That'll be 4 plus 1. And this one's a little bit ugly, so we'll throw this one in the calculator. And I have already done that, so I'm looking at my work over here. And what you end up with, uh, if you do want to do pieces of this, this is 1 over 5 factorial, which is 120. Um, 0 minus 3 is negative 0.3, but that is 3 tenths to the fifth power. Uh, and if you do clean that up, that ends up being 0 0.00020. So that is extremely accurate. So the absolute value, the maximum error that I would have here would be that by Lagrange. So that's if you're using the Lagrange error formula. Um, now you do know, or you should know, how to estimate error with an alternating series test, which you actually could use here if we wanted to go to alternating series test. I may come back and do that at the end of this once I do all the Lagrange approaches. Uh, you also should know how to do approximate error if, error if, if your interval, if your series can converge by the integral test. Um, that is the my least favorite. This is the most difficult one in my opinion. Uh, let's move on. Let's look at another example. And so here we're using Lagrange to find the maximum possible error of this approximation. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I did on the last problem. Uh, I'm going to go back and grab the formula so we can look at that. Just make sure we have that down. And you do probably need to memorize this. So once again, I'm going to make note that my function is e to the x. Um, my center of this series, this looks like my, I'm centered at 0. I am approximating e to the first power, so a is 1. I use the fifth degree Taylor polynomial. I use the fifth degree Taylor polynomial, so n is 5. And then I need to get m, which in this case is not quite as easy, in my opinion, as the previous problem, because m needs to be less than or equal to the absolute value of the sixth derivative of my function. And the sixth derivative of my function, uh, derivatives of e to the x, would just be e to the x. So I need to find out when, what number is e to the x less than, and unlike sine and cosine, e to the x by itself does not have a maximum. It keeps increasing forever. So for this example, we do need to consider the interval of convergence. So I'm looking at e to the x, so I need the maximum of e to the x on the interval, not uh, not the interval of convergence, but the interval from my center to the point I actually plugged in. So I'm looking at e to the x only on this small window of 0 to 1, um, and I know that the maximum of e to the x would happen at x equals 1. So the maximum of e to the x on 0 to 1 is e to the first power, which is approximately 2.7. And I could use I could use 2.7 in this, or e. Should I just use e? Let's just use e. And I'll do that first. So my formula up here, my error is there. So my maximum error in this example is m, which is e, over n plus 1. So I use the fifth degree Taylor polynomial, so 5 plus 1 factorial, times a minus c, or c minus a. It doesn't matter because that should be an absolute value. So 1 minus 0 to the 5 plus first power. That cleans up fairly nicely. That ends up being e over 6 factorial, which is 720. Um, now, 
If you don't have a calculator, this is a little bit difficult to work with because E is an irrational number. Um, so what we can do, E, I'm going to see, I, I'm going to try to use a number that's easier to wrap my head around, and E is less than 3. So I'm actually going to increase my value of M a little bit, which does increase your error amount, but this makes it easier to work with. I'm going to replace E with a 3, and 3 divided by 720 does reduce to 1 over 240. And if you wanted to plug that into a calculator to get a maximum possible error, that would be 0 0.0038. So there's our maximum error for this approximation. Again, pretty accurate. Not as accurate as the uh, cosine approximation we previously did. But there we go. And then I have one more problem. This one is not on that sheet that I provided a link for earlier. I just made this one up a few minutes before I started recording. So let's look at this one. This is a little bit less direct as the previous two. So I do define a few things. So T sub n is the nth degree Taylor Paul number for f. We are centered at zero. So I may go ahead and make a note to myself that C, my center of the series, is zero. Uh, I do tell you that the Taylor Paul number does converge to f of x for all x's, so we don't have to worry about the interval convergence. Okay, so here we are. I am using my third degree, so n is 3. I'm using my third degree telepolynomial to approximate f of 2. What I'm saying here with this statement, I'm saying that f of 2 is approximately my third degree Taylor polynomial at 2, and that returned a value of 3. So I am plugging in 2. I'm approximating what's happening at 2. And then to use Taylor's polynomial, I need m. And for this problem, I just explicitly told you what m is. m is the maximum value of the next derivative. So if I use a third degree Taylor polynomial, I'm telling you right here, my fourth derivative of f caps out at 2, so we know that m is 2. Okay, so that's all the stuff that ties to Taylor's polynomial. Then the question does not simply say estimate the error. It says explain why f of 2 must be greater than 1. So I got a Taylor approximation of 3. Why is it that f of 2 has to be bigger than 1? And what we're going to do is show that my error, if my approximation was 3, my error must be less than 2 in order to guarantee that f of 2 cannot be 1. So let's see what that maximum error would be. So the maximum error, my error is less than or equal to m, which is 2, over n plus 1. So n is 3, so that will be 3 plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of a minus c to the n plus 1 power. And I'm going to work that out and see what we have here. And we will not need a calculator. So that's 2 over 4 factorial is 24 times 2 to the 4th power, which is 16. So if we start reducing this, 2 over 24 is uh, 1 over 12. That's 1 12th times 16, which reduces to 4 thirds. So that is my maximum error. So if that's my maximum error, so if that's my maximum error, then I know that my actual value of f of 2 is going to be somewhere between 3, my approximation, plus and minus the maximum error. So if t3, what am I doing here? Okay, so f of 2, my actual value of f of 2, must be less than or equal to my Taylor approximation at 2 plus the maximum error. And f2 must be greater than or equal to that Taylor approximation at 2 minus my maximum error. And this one on the left is the one we're going to be interested in. So we have 3 minus 4 thirds is less than or equal to f of 2. And just to satisfy the gods, I'm going to look for an upper bound as well. And so that will be 3 plus 4 thirds over here. And when we work this out, 3 minus 4 thirds is 5 thirds. 3 plus 4 thirds is 13 thirds. And so we know that f of 2 must be between 5 thirds and 13 thirds, which means f of 2 must be greater than 1. And there is that one. Uh, so that's it for Taylor's polynomial. So if you want to uh, just stop watching right here, you can. But I do want to go back and revisit the very first example I gave you. Um, because Lagrange is a fairly complicated error approximation technique, 
And the alternating series error approximation is significantly easier because if we look at this first example and we choose instead to use the alternating series error test, then by the alternating series, I would need to look at my very next omitted term, my very first omitted term, which would be negative 0.3 to the 6 divided by 6 factorial. And the alternating series error would be less than or equal to the magnitude of that first omitted term, which is negative 0.3 to the 6 all over 6 factorial. And I have not pre-punched this in a calculator, so give me a second. Okay, that was a second. And when you punch this in, you get 0 0.0000. 10125. And if you look at the alternating series error, you actually get a tighter window. This error maximum is actually less than what Lagrange gave you. So great thing about the alternating series error bound is it's not only easier than Lagrange, it is also a little bit more accurate. It gives you a smaller window. So if you have the option of using alternating series error approximation, then use that. Uh, but you will see prob problems such as number two here, where you don't have that option because number two did not alternate similarly. Number three, we don't have enough information about the function to know whether or not the series alternates or to even find the next term. So you need to know them all, and that is it for this lesson.